Well, we're going to move forward with the afternoon portion of our day, and I am going to introduce our second group of presenters from the Think Water Fellows um, and Wisconsin Water School. Um, we are going to hear from them about applying systems thinking to water community engagement. We have three speakers, Joe Lattimore, who's an aquatic ecologist and outreach specialist at Michigan State University, and the woman who I will always remember for introducing me to the adorable but invasive New Zealand mud snails, who are really, really cute. Um, Christy DeVera, Water Resources Program Co Coordinator for City of Superior in Wisconsin. And Deborah Grobner, who's Min Aqua Education Specialist in the Department of Natural Resources. So again, at the end of these three talks, we'll have time for questions for the speakers. And without further delay, I'm going to hand the clicker over to my good friend, Joe Lattimore. Here you go. Welcome. Thank you. Oh, Thanks. <laughs> All right, so uh, as uh, Laura mentioned, I'm from Michigan State University. I work in the Department of Fisheries and Wildlife. A lot of the work that I do uh, focuses on aquatic invasive species. And today I wanna introduce the rest of you to the New Zealand mud snail. Um, it's one of the cutest little invasive species you'll ever meet. Uh, the New Zealand mud snail was recently discovered in Michigan rivers. And yes, it's native to New Zealand. And it's been in the U.S. for a while, but it's pretty recent invader to Michigan. And these are little bitty snails. And these snails can easily hitchhike on your boots, your waders, your fishing and boating equipment. Um, and that has been leading to their spread to many uh, recreational and popular rivers in Michigan. And here's what I mean about small. Uh, these, these are adult New Zealand mud snails, and they can quickly reproduce to really high numbers. And in fact, fun fact about New Zealand mud snails is that it only takes one to populate. They don't even need a mate. Just one um, can uh, reproduce in clones and uh, uh, overrun a river system with um, thousands and thousands of New Zealand mud snails. Now the problem behind New Zealand mud snails is that they are um, voracious eaters. They're grazing on the algae, on the gravel on the bottom of a river, um, basically eating up the whole bottom of the food web in that river. And so this is an issue that, that certainly, as you can clearly see, is a problem for our rivers. They're going to compete with our native species, native snails, other invertebrates that live in the river. And those are, of course, food for the fish. And so you can see how disrupting that could seriously cause some problems for our rivers. So unfortunately, our capacity in the state of Michigan to address yet another invasive species is severely limited. Being surrounded by the Great Lakes, we are a hub for introductions of invasive species. Um, we get um, transatlantic shipping that comes across the ocean to uh, the Great Lakes, often introduces invasive species or non-native species to our waterways. Um, and then we have also one of the highest densities of inland lakes and streams, as you can see on the image here, um, making it very easy for an invader to make its way and spread very quickly. Um, so that's our situation. That's our problem. Uh, in this case, it's not an example of turtle on snail crime, as we heard about earlier today, but actually in it's, it's situation where the snail itself is the problem. So therefore, uh, as a Think Water Fellow this year, uh, I've initiated a systems thinking approach to try and identify the most effective and the most efficient way of dealing with this new invasion in Michigan, um, of slowing or stopping the spread of these New Zealand mud snails. And as we've seen uh, throughout the morning, um, one of the efficient ways of dealing with these kind of complex problems is through mental models or maps that we can use to get a good, solid, and most realistic picture possible of the issue, the players involved, and potential solutions. Um, again, because in Michigan we are faced with so many invasive species, we can't spend a ton of resources on just one. So we have to be effective and efficient. So first I can show you uh, where we started, where I started thinking about this issue, a very simple mental model. We have our New Zealand mud snail. Here's our bad guy. And what do they do? They disrupt healthy rivers. 
And well, who does that affect? It affects the healthy rivers. It also affects the river users, the people who depend upon the river for recreation or even their livelihoods are affected by this. So this was the starting point. Okay, here's our system, but what else do we need to know? We need to look at the parts of those things. So a healthy river, what is that made up of? Um, native species that I mentioned before. Um, there's aesthetic appeal. We like a healthy river. We like to use a healthy river. We like to fish a healthy river. Um, there's the river ecology itself that is a balance of all of these native species and the physical and chemical um, uh, conditions in that river. So these are all things to keep in mind as we think about how the New Zealand mud snail is disrupting these healthy rivers. We can also dig into the different types of river users. Um, they're not all the same. What they're looking for in a river is one thing. Another thing is how much of a risk they pose to the spread of invasive species, these New Zealand mud snails. For example, someone who is a fly fisher that wades in many different rivers in Michigan and carries those waders that may have little snails or snail eggs on them from one river to the next may be a unwitting accomplice to the New Zealand mud snail and moving it around. Um, so they are a high risk type of user group versus some other user groups like boaters that may not be uh, a vector of these New Zealand mud snails. Another interesting point about understanding uh, these different river user groups is how we can interact with them as river managers. Um, some of them are very well organized, like our Trout Unlimited groups, very well organized. They have influence over their members. They can uh, spread educational mes messages and so forth. Others are less well organized, like paddlers. Most people who kayak or canoe our rivers are not part of a kayaking group. They're just someone who owns a kayak and goes out and may not realize or have a, a, a channel for getting information about New Zealand mud snails. So that poses a challenge for us as well. Um, now we have to go a little bit further. Who else is involved? Well, of course, the natural resources agencies, right? We have our state agencies, local agencies, federal agencies, all have a role and a mandate to protect these waterways. So what are their perspectives? What are their ideas? And what are their constraints on dealing with this one invasive species in the whole set of invasive species that we face in Michigan that range from plants to fish to diseases to invertebrates like this mud snail? And so one thing we have to keep in mind is we're thinking about all of these different players, and we could go into this further, like those businesses that depend on healthy rivers, um, is what we're really looking for. Basically, we want to put in some effort that results in a desired effect. So the effort could include research. We don't know much about New Zealand mud snails, honestly. Education, getting information out to river users and managers about what does work to stop these invaders. And then finally, policy and action. And the desired end result is we're stopping the spread of New Zealand mud snails. So that's what we're looking for through the systems thinking approach. And then, of course, the maps, they keep getting more complex, but that's exciting and important because it gives us a chance to think about them in a very systematic way. So we think about what kind of research do we need? What kind of action and policy do we need? What kind of education do we need to reach those desired effects? And who can do them? Is it the Natural Resource Agency? Is it universities? Is it these uh, recreational groups or community groups, environmental groups? Who has the capacity to do those and where are their gaps? Um, and so that has been a very uh, kind of eye-opening part of this process for me as working through it is that understanding some of these different stakeholders' perspectives on the problem. For example, by meeting with angling groups, I got a sense for what they're willing to do and what they're not willing to do to stop the spread of these snails. Sure, I'll rinse off my, my boots or let them dry for a little while, but if I have to carry a bunch of chemicals in my truck as I go from one side to another to another, I don't want something that's going to spill in my truck. I don't want bleach in my truck, you know, things like that, that we have to realize that's the reality of who we're dealing with. And, um, and they also recognize that our tried and true method of stopping invasive species, which is putting up a sign by the water, is not going to be enough. Um, they need to know exactly what they need to do, how often they need to do it, and to know that it's safe and effective. Um, and so what I've done in a nutshell for you here is walked you through my process for developing a mental model, a, a map of the problem, and I haven't shown you everything. Um, but the next step now is to more formally take this mental model and 
work with others, these other groups, more formally, like the natural resource agencies, like the recreational groups, and say, here's what I think. Here's what I've gathered, what I've gleaned. Now tell me where I'm wrong. Tell me where my, my model does not fit reality and help me clarify those systems a little bit better and how we can work together towards solving this New Zealand mud snail problem. And that's not, and as we talked about before, I know Eric mentioned it and others did too, this mapping is the first step. We have mapping and then we want to activate and check, meaning taking some action and then evaluating to see whether it's working or not. It's an iterative process. So what we're interested now in is we have our map and now activating. How do we tell the story about New Zealand mud snails? You know, how do we get people interested and concerned about them? How do we show them images of an infestation to show that this is not what you want in your river and here's what can happen, for example? Um, is there research that needs to be funded? Are there experimental trials that need to be had to see how to eliminate these mud snails from our rivers? And then are we getting the outputs that we want, the outcomes? That's the checking part. And if not, back to the drawing board we go. So it's back to the original very simple model that I showed you originally. You know, I mentioned that one of the key things for me experiences by going through this fellows program was identifying the relevant perspectives thinking outside of the box. I normally, in my work with invasive species, work with a lot of boaters and washing boats and stopping the spread of weeds from lakes to one lake to another. Working on rivers where they're very connected systems and we have different types of user groups and different agencies involved is different. So I needed to have a way to systematically think about that and not try to apply a one-size-fits-all solution to this problem. Um, it helped me identify challenges that were obvious, say to the anglers, but maybe not to me, about not wanting to carry certain chemicals in their vehicles when they're out fishing. Um, and also to identify gaps or needs. Resources maybe we need to identify or find to, to do the steps that we want to do to solve these problems. What kind of effort needs to be made um, that will help us to take advantage of the limited resources we have in Michigan to focus on any single invasive species for the most desirable effect. So, you know, in, in summary, I suppose, uh, what I can say is that this approach has really helped and is leading to a more broadly engaged process for dealing with this particular water issue. Um, and the ideal that we're looking for here is, is for it to lead to a clear path of action and evaluation uh, to battle these New Zealand mud snails, which at this point are, in f are basically our four <laughs> most popular uh, recreational rivers in Michigan, to keep them contained, perhaps eradicate them from where they are, and definitely to stop their spread elsewhere in the state of Michigan. Um, and so being able to involve all of the uh, involved stakeholders uh, to lead towards an effective and efficient solution is our ultimate goal here, and I'm excited to see how that will work out. So thank you for your attention. Thank you.